All right, we got a lot of ground to cover this week here on the Sports News. We're going to be talking Wanakee baseball. We're going to be talking girls softball. We're going to be talking girls soccer. Lots and lots of stuff to get to. But first, we are going to have the headlines, and they are powered by the Red Zone over on Regent Street and Conant Automotive in Stoughton. Stick around. The Sports News right here, right now. All right, time now for the headlines. You're looking to the tackles, hits, checks, and dunks that make up the local sports scene. I am Rich Reynolds, and let's hit the ground running. You know, back in 2008, my family decided to follow a job and make a move to Austin, Texas for a couple of years. Now, we lived just a stone's throw away from Lake Travis High School, who had won three state football titles in a row. Their stadium had like 20,000 people, I mean, and all the time it was nuts. And by the way, their main rival, was Westlake, a school which produced Drew Brees. Now, I bring that all up because it's out of Westlake that the Badgers have signed their latest recruit, a three-star prospect by the name of Nakia Watson. Watson rushed for over 1,600 yards and had 22 touchdowns last season alone. Yeah, he will wear Cardinal and white starting in 2018. Okay, you'll get a kick out of this. Holly Kabord scored a goal in the 109th minute as the fourth-ranked Oregon girls soccer team topped Burlington 1-0 to advance to state for the third straight year. Now, Oregon won the title in 2015 and was the runner-up a season ago. They'll square off against top-seeded Whitefish Bay in Milwaukee on Friday night. Now, the Panthers aren't the only local girls squad headed to state. Rachel Toma put one in the back of the net off an assist from Brita Hovde as Madison Edgewood advanced to state in D3 with a 1-0 win over Mount Horeb. The second-ranked Crusaders are making their first trip back to state since 2011 when they won it all. Edgewood will tangle with undefeated Winnicani on Friday afternoon. Well, keeping it with the ladies a little bit longer here, the WIAA softball titles were decided on Saturday at Goodman Diamond in Madison. Division I went to Kakana. D2 saw Beloit Turner fall 13-9 to Rice Lake. The Division Three title went to Laconia, while Judah Albany scratched out single runs in the third and fourth innings, and Nicole Becker struck out eight in round two, a 2-1 two win over Stevens Point Pacelli. This week, the spotlight will shift to Fox City Stadium as the boys take the field in the WIAA State Baseball Championships. Local teams that made it into the D1 quarterfinals include Sun Prairie, Wanakee, which will be on this very show, and Beloit Memorial, while the D2 semis had Beloit Turner and Wapan advance. Now, we will update you on the title winners on next week's show. And after coming off a tough loss last week against Dallas, the Madison Radicals had to try and turn it around on the road against an undefeated Minnesota windchill. Well, after losing a five-goal advantage, the Rads were able to send the game into overtime before pulling off a thrilling 23-22 win. With the victory, the Radicals are just a half game out of first place. Next up, another tough road match against rival, yeah, Pittsburgh Thunderbirds. Well, for more information on our headlines and all the 411, check out these fine websites. Stick around, we have more interviews than anyone else. Coming up next, here on the Sports News, on Wisconsin's 57 Sports. You know, playing high school sports is something that you remember your whole life. You take it with you, there's great stories at reunions, all that kind of good stuff. The stories get even better when you can make it to state. And that's what's going on right now with the Wanakee baseball team as we bring in Jarrett, Derek, Jack, and Jeff. Welcome on in, fellas. Congratulations, by the way, you are playing at state, Fox City Stadium, this Tuesday against Kimberly, and then we'll see where you guys can take it from there. So a lot of success for you guys this season. We've talked about it on our headlines. What do you think has been the key to your guys' success so far this season? Uh, the keys to our success this season have definitely been our pitching and our hitting. Our pitching's been outstanding with Ben Nordlow coming in strong, taking all across Central to get there to state, and uh, Dane Olson pitching a, a great game against Toma, which also uh, in the sectional finals, which uh, advanced us to state. And our hitting this year has been outstanding, especially late in the season. We've had uh, very many, Clay, very many uh, great hits that have um, came in clutch 
this year. Yeah, well, if you can hit the ball well and pitch the ball well, you got a pretty good shot at winning. So uh, that helps. Another thing that helps usually is having good team chemistry. If you could describe the relationship that you guys have with one another. Yeah, so we have a lot of seniors. We have some sophomores, juniors. Beginning of the year, we weren't that close, but we did some team bonding activities. Got in the pra practice every day, you know, got together. And eventually we just came like one family, basically all brothers, all trying to achieve the same goal. So it's kind of easy to get to know people and be together when you're with them every single day. Baseball is one of those sports where you got to play for each other, not a bunch of me at bats if you want to win. So that's cool. What do you think has been the difference between this year's team and previous year's teams? I think the difference between this year's team and the previous years has just been the senior leadership that we have this year. In the previous years, there wasn't always the same strong bond coming from the top all the way down because we've had years where we have all the way from seniors down to freshmen on the team playing every day. So I think when you have a strong set of seniors who set an example for the younger guys, it really gives the team a chance to succeed when they have people to look up to. Excellent. Now, again, Tuesday, state tournament. You're at Fox City Stadium. Let's talk about that game. Kimberly, who you're playing and what your expectations are as you go to the state tournament. Well, I expect it to be a good game. I mean, it's obviously every team that's there deserves to be there. And we honestly, I think we like our chances versus anybody because like Jared and everybody said, we have great seniors and everybody's just really together right now and we're clicking at the right time. Any of you guys nervous going up against some of those quote unquote heavyweight programs that you're going against? Uh, not really, we've been really strong lately. If we just keep playing the way we've been playing, we can definitely beat any team out there. Absolutely. Lots of success for you guys this season. Hopefully it continues this week up in Appleton. We'll report all about it right here on the Sports News. Good luck to you guys, and we hope to see you with the uh, state title. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. A special thank you to Conan Automotive in Stoughton for supporting local athletics. All right, Jeb Simmons is back with us from CrossFit Fort Atkinson, becoming kind of a regular here on the program. I always like that, and I also like the fact that we're talking about a topic that is good and healthy, and that's always a, a great thing. So Jeb, welcome back into the program. And for those that aren't familiar with it, what exactly is CrossFit? Uh, CrossFit is constantly varied movements done um, basically against the clock. So everything we do is against time, um, but it covers everything from weightlifting to running, um, um, body weight movements, um, climbing ropes, we kind of just mash it all together and make workouts out of them. I think people always wonder too, what's the impact of a workout going to be on me? How does CrossFit impact your body, mind, and lifestyle? Uh, it, it's huge. I mean, we really focus on, obviously you're going to get your workout in, but we like to focus too on, on the nutrition aspect um, with our members and also the mental toughness. That's a big one. You know, when you're when you're working out, you know, can you run a mile? We've got a lot of people that don't even think they can do that. And as coach, like, um, we really get in, we, we're passionate about getting the mental toughness for people to be able to handle that kind of stuff. Yeah, the, the, the nutritional aspect so huge. Also, too, I, I think people kind of wonder, okay, CrossFit, am I going to be out on my own? Is this an individual thing or is this a class thing that you guys do? Everything we do is class-based. Um, roughly, we you know we'll have anywhere from 15 to 20 people in a class, um, and people enjoy that a lot more. Makes them holds them more accountable, um, and they're not going through the workouts by themselves. You know, and that's what people like. So, yeah, absolutely. I think I think class-based, and I know it works for me a lot too. I know sometimes too, um, you know, the, in a new sport or a new kind of a workout, sometimes women can be very intimidated by that as well. I mean, do you offer something for the ladies? We do. We hold. Um, we offer uh, six-week challenges about three, four times a year, um, and the ladies really love it. They get together, um, and it's just them working out together with the coaches, um, and they seem to enjoy it a lot more than just kind of coming into a regular class. You know, they like to get into the six-week challenge. It kind of introduces them to CrossFit. Now, what about someone who maybe was an athlete in high school or was in the army, was in good shape, and then got out of shape? Over the years, you know, the pizza, the beer, it all kinds of, you know, adds up. What if they haven't worked out in 30 years? Can they join? Yes, absolutely. I would say that's probably the biggest type of member we have. Someone that played sports in high school or, you know, they were in shape at one time is what I hear all the time, and they want to get back in shape. So yeah, definitely that's, uh, 
probably the biggest type of member that we have at our gym. Excellent stuff. That's always a good motivator, I think, for a lot of people. So check it out, CrossFit Fort Atkinson. Jeb, thank you as always. Thank you. CrossFit Games are coming to our fine city here in Madison, Wisconsin. And a lot of people have been jumping on board, getting fit through CrossFit as we bring in Dirk Gessler. He is the owner at CrossFit Recursive. And Dirk, I love talking some CrossFit. I personally have never done it. I've seen it a lot. Looks like a lot of fun. Great way to get into shape. So if I wanted to get started with CrossFit Recursive, how would I do that? Uh, you can One of two ways, you can either call us or uh, log on to our website, www.crossfitrecursive.com. Uh, schedule yourself a no sweat intro. And what that means is you're gonna come in and sit down with us. We're gonna talk about your goals and where you wanna go, uh, things you're already doing right and how we can and keep that going. And then uh, we'll figure out the best place for you to get started uh, for where you are right now. Yeah, and I think that's where a lot of people are like, okay, what are the first few weeks gonna look like that I'm doing this? I exactly how does that go? Uh, we generally recommend people start out at roughly three times a week. Uh, so you're gonna come in, uh, the class is, is instructor led from the beginning to end, they'll warm you up. We'll work on some mobility to make sure your joints are healthy. And then we'll, we'll either learn a new skill or lift some heavy weight. And then we'll finish it all up with a fun, intense workout in the last half to, you know, 15 minutes of the, of the hour. I know for every workout, you know, you, you got to get prepared. Uh, as far as a CrossFit class, and if I'm going to my first CrossFit class, what do I have to do to be prepared for it? Well, a lot of people think, oh, I need to get in shape so I can do CrossFit, but that's not the case at all. Uh, we you use CrossFit to get in shape. So really all you need is make sure you have some comfortable clothes that you don't mind sweating in, and I'd bring a water bottle and show up, and we can take care of the rest. Wow, that seems pretty simple. That's yeah. that's good stuff. Now, I know people want results. They're going to work out. They're like, okay, um, what can I kind of expect realistically in the first few months of doing CrossFit? You know, the first few months are kind of a blur. Uh, you're just getting better at everything in CrossFit. We, we have so many different skills that you're working on and there's just, you're improving all these things. Um, you're gonna notice that you're sleeping better. Uh, hopefully stress levels are down and then you're gonna have more energy. Uh, and then, you know, muscles in places that you didn't know you had muscles and <laughs> things like that start happening pretty quick, so. That's always a good thing. Yeah. So um, we've been talking about it, the CrossFit Games are coming to Madison. Everybody's really excited about that. What are the CrossFit Games for people that don't know? Uh, the CrossFit Games are the final part in a three-round three um, test to find what, what CrossFit headquarters calls the fittest on earth. So they, there's an open which anybody can join in uh, February, March. That lasts five weeks. And then uh, the best from the open end up in regionals, which, ju which just wrapped up. There's regionals all over the world. Mm -hmm. And then the best from regionals will come to the CrossFit Games. So you know, this is the best people, the best fitness people on the planet, basically. Should be cool stuff. We yeah. are looking forward to that and definitely looking forward into uh, seeing people get into shape with CrossFit Recursive. Dirk, thank you so much for being here. We'll talk to you next time. Thank you. You know, whenever I think of rock climbing, being the old guy that I am, I'm reminded of a classic Seinfeld episode where it's Kramer and George trying to pass sandwiches down to Tony and he falls and all that. I'm sure rock climbing, there's a lot more to that. And in that spirit, we'll bring in Keith Kobisa and he'll tell us more about it. He's with Summit Strength and Fitness. And Keith, thanks for joining us. And if you could, try to explain to everybody what makes rock climbing such a unique sport. Uh, it's Really, you know, it is a big physical challenge. You know, you have to use your whole body. It's not just about pulling yourself up the wall, um, but it's also a huge mental challenge. You know, it's, you know, keeping yourself on the wall. And there's a lot, a lot to think about. A lot that can get in the way of your mind. Yeah, I would, you know, it, it's one of those sports where definitely it could play mind games yeah. on you. And so that's something that you would have to learn as you go along and something hopefully you guys will be able to teach. And as far as the significance of Summit Strength and Fitness, what is that in regards to the growth of the sport? Um, so climbing is going to be in the Olympics in 2020. So there's you know, a lot of people getting interested in what, you know, what's climbing all about since it's going to be in the Olympics. And so at Summit, we're taking taking it and treating it like any other sport that used to be so individualized where you would just kind of go leisurely climb. Um, but our facility, we're treating climbing like a sport, whereas you're coming in to practice and train just like you would if you were on a 
you know, collegiate team, collegiate football team, you know, very structured to our uh, approach to climbing. So obviously it's a competitive sport, and then how do they judge it? Is that just on time alone? Is it, uh, is it judged? How does that work? Each discipline is a little bit different, but the, the main focus, you know, what we're focusing on is called the, the discipline called bouldering, which you're climbing without ropes, you're, you're not going that high, um, and that's based on difficulty. So there's set routes, set problems, um, we call them, and it's based basically whoever can climb the hardest problems. Now, is Summit Strength and Fitness a place where only rock climbers are gonna go, or can anybody get involved? No, we like we uh, welcome anyone, you know, all athletes, all non-athletes, anyone that just wants to get in shape. You know, we take other athletes and maybe put them on the wall sometimes to challenge them in a different physical way. We um, just use the wall as a different tool, a fitness tool for people to stay in shape and enjoy themselves while doing so. Now for those that are getting into rock climbing, where could they go, do you think, outside of the gym to further their skills? Yeah, so just north of us is Devil's, um, Devil's Lake. It's about a 45 minute drive and that has some of the best outdoor rock climbing in the Midwest. And I, you know, as much as I love the gym, yeah, I was, because I created it, um, I also love getting outside and I encourage all my clients to get out there and climb. and. You know, take what they learned in our controlled environment and bring it to the real rock and enjoy nature. Absolutely, yeah. and a beautiful place to go. We got about 15 seconds left. Is the sport gaining in popularity, Keith? Yeah, there's uh, there's been a bunch of big events that have been happening at Devil's Lake, that bringing people in from all over the country to check out the check out the sport. Cool stuff. Check it out, Keith, with Summit Strength and Fitness. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Brought to you by Conan Automotive, taking care of you by taking care of your family's car. You know, one of the cool things about having kids that are very active in sports is that you get to go all over the state and see some great facilities. And I gotta tell you, there is none better that I have watched my kids play a game in than at Just a Game Field House up in the Dells as we bring in Chad Mazur, who's the Director of Business Operations uh, up in the Just a Game Field House there. And Chad, welcome on in. We're gonna talk about some events that are going on, including something I think is pretty cool. It's the Guarding Against Cancer 5K Run 3K Walk. Talk a little bit about that coming up on June 24th. Sure, so the Guarding Against Cancer 5K Run and 3K Walk, uh, it's a new event for us. Uh, it's for Greg Gard's uh, new charity, and it starts and ends at Just a Game Fieldhouse in the Wisconsin Dells. And during that time, we'll have uh, live music from bands such as Madison County. Uh, we'll have beer and root beer uh, from Potosi Brewery. And the best part is 100% of those profits will go towards Greg Gard's uh, new charity, Guarding Against Cancer. Yeah, Madison County, good group, so that's gonna be a, a lot of fun. Also, this whole event kind of falls during something that you have going on up there called the Big 1000 Hoop Fest. What does that all entail? That's right, that's one of our new events this year. Um, it goes from June 10th to the 24th. Uh, it includes a number of different tournaments and events for us. Um, for uh, groups of all ages, we have 10 year old boys and girls, all the way up to men 50 and older. Uh, we're going to continue the trend of new music, uh, live music, uh, with Madison County and other groups. Um, and also a portion of each of the entries that come in during that time are donated towards the Easter Seals of Wisconsin, uh, MAC Fund, also Guarding Against Cancer. And one of our big events during that time is the Zach Showalter uh, Camp with Gary Close on June 22nd. It is fi uh, filling up quickly, so uh, we recommend uh, everyone to get in that as, as soon as possible. We know Gary the Shot Doctor's a regular here on the program, so we like hearing that. Uh, you also have the WBCA All-Star Game, sixth time that you guys get to host that. What is that event all about? How cool is that? It's, it's awesome for us to be able to host an event such, such as the high school game uh, here in Wisconsin. Um, it's a privilege, it's an honor to be associated with the WBCA. Uh, historically, that event has been uh, in Madison at the Fieldhouse, um, so it's an honor for that to come here to the Wisconsin Dells at Just a Game Fieldhouse. Uh, it'll be a very festive atmosphere, uh, just a great event to have at the JAG. Now, we only have about 30 seconds left. That's probably not a time to list off, or enough time to list off all the great stuff you guys do up there. Can you talk just quickly, though, some of the tournaments, leagues, camps that you guys also have? Sure, so we have camps basically all, all year. Um, October is full of uh, fall skill camps for uh, kids eighth grade and under. We have leagues starting in June and July uh, for volleyball and uh, basketball. and. What's not to love about coming to a facility that's uh, 57,000 square feet and uh, six basketball courts, 10 volleyball courts. Uh, it's just fun to, to be a part of uh, events it's like It's great these. stuff and the Dell's always a great setting as well. Chad, thanks for being here, man. Thank you very much. 
A special thank you to Conan Automotive in Stoughton for supporting local athletics. All right, let's shine a light on girls' varsity lacrosse. That's right, lacrosse, we see it. If you watch it on ESPN, it's big, especially on the East Coast. It's been gaining popularity here in the Midwest as well as we've been talking about that. And we bring in right now Anne Gravel, Abby Drake. They are the head coach and senior captain of Middleton's lacrosse team. And ladies, welcome on in. And if you could tell everybody, how's the spring season going so far? Uh, it's been a great season. We just wrapped up our regular season play with a record of 14 and 2. And back-to-back uh, -back undefeated champions of the uh, Madison Conference, which is our Madison Area Lacrosse Association Conference. Wow, beautiful. 14 and 2. That's a lot of success there out on the field. So what makes this team, do you think, so successful? There's so many factors uh, that play into it. But I think, um, most importantly, the girls come to practice every day to learn and to get better, and that just makes my job as a coach so easy and so rewarding. Yeah, especially when, when anybody's that engaged and wants to play and you know is out there and trying to get better and improve all the time, that's great. So if you could, how would you describe this year's team? What sums them up? Do you wanna take that one? Yeah, we have a really great group of experienced girls who have been playing together for a while. So it's great also to have some underclassmen coming up every year to replace the upperclassmen and take on some new roles. Uh, also, the group is just super supportive of each other, so I think overall it's just a really bonded, great group of girls to be with. Love to be in a team atmosphere like that and be cohesive. Who are some of the names, the players, that have made significant impacts for you on your 14-2 and two season? Well, uh, I'll take that one. Um, Abby Drake. First and foremost, um, That's an easy one, come on. <laughs> um, Abby's got so many strengths on the field um, and off the field. She, um, she really does help us become a better um, poised team. She's a, a prolific scorer. Uh, she leads our conference right now. Uh, before our last game on Friday, she was at 51 goals for the season. Wow. Yeah, um, so that makes my job obviously a lot easier. But she has a, a full team supporting her. We've got some outstanding midfielders, um, junior Eleanor Mackey, and sophomore Julia Fermanek really kind of do the dirty work. And then we've got some uh, Abby's other tri-captain senior cohorts, um, Mia Aker and goal and Gabby Walwig on defense. Really just pull it all together for us. Excellent, so how is the team poised for the playoffs and then the state tournament? Uh, we're currently fifth in the state, um, in state rankings. And as coach mentioned before, we are Mela champs, which is our local conference. So really, for the next week, we're just hoping to get some good practices in and then stay energized and excited for whatever is to come in playoffs. And how do you build on the strengths? What's the major strength of this team? Uh, I think the hustle on the field outweighs any team. Uh, every single game from the first whistle to the buzzer, everyone is working as hard as they can to do everything that they can to get the win or energize teammates and it's just a really great energy every single time you're on the field. Excellent stuff, we'll be watching you in the playoffs. Ladies and Abby, thanks for joining us. Thank, thank you. you. A special thank you to Conan Automotive in Stoughton for supporting local athletics. Big thank you to all of our guests that came on the program today. Especially enjoyed talking some baseball with Juana Key. Also, a thank you to you for watching the show and to all of our sponsors that make it possible, including the Red Zone over on Regent Street and Conan Automotive in Stoughton. Yeah, big props to you. We'll see you next time on the Sports News right here on Wisconsin's 57 Sports.